joke, I've been a money maker. I've been a record breaker, taking credit as an educator. I've been known to spit the flows and make it shaky, shaky thing. Popping, locking, stopping, let it hang. Watch us as we drop this hip hop, it's like it stays. <laughs> we make the whole room drop and everybody sang. We want the funk. We gotta have that funk. Oh, we kick it old school, we think we're so cool. We take it back to the past, we gonna act a fool. Ah, up jumps the middle finger, make my Jaeger just. Hello, 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 and welcome to Sports Buzz, the fanatical view. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio, Comcast Cable Channel 23, downtown Danbury, Connecticut. On this suddenly uh, rainy June 6th, which is not good, as we are on the eve of the Denver Westerners uh, baseball season getting going, and there is rain in the forecast all weekend, which could uh, lead to a little messy situation. Plan on. <laughs> That's right. As we hear, uh, my man, right-hand man, right there, Mr. Bob Broad Jr. Let's say hello to Bobby. How you doing there, Bob? I'm doing well. We have a, a special show tonight. We will get to our guests who are sitting to my right in just a moment. But yeah. I first have to uh, mention, you know, we were off last week and I didn't get to see Bob. So, Bob, yes, what happened to your New York Rangers? Uh. I mean, my I Boston know. Bruins, uh, they did a little number on you guys. I know. They did, they, they, they did a bang-up jab. They did such a number that your coach got fired. I know. <laughs> I mean, how does this happen, Bob? Hey, you know. Going into the it's, season, it's you guys were, uh, you know, you were picked uh, to win the whole thing. I know. I know. Uh, this well, let's uh, get serious for a second, though. What do you think about the firing of Tort Tortorelli there? Well, uh, I kind of wish it didn't happen, but unfortunately it did. And uh, what do you think about the targeting of uh, the captain, Mark Messier, Ew, as the potential replacement? I would love to see that. That could be a good deal. Because Messier has been making the rounds in a few places lately. Yeah, and he's uh, entrenched with the Rangers, and everybody loves him. So, you know, it could be good. I'm sure it would be very well supported by the Ranger fans. Um, we will get a little bit more maybe later in the show into uh, the hockey deal and my Bruins doing a number now on the Penguins. Yeah, let them call Bruins. Right, yes, very much so. Yeah. Um, but as you know, if you were watching the last couple weeks, we had our 100th episode special. And uh, during that show, we touched on some of the big stories that we covered over the last uh, three years or so since we started the show. And in those stories were some local sports action including the Danbury Westerners. And uh, twice during our time here, they have made deep runs into the playoffs, uh, and they are currently the defending NECBL Western Division champions. Uh, so we were pretty pleased to begin our march towards 200 episodes by bringing in a couple of Westerners managers right here, actually the head ball coach, Jamie Shevchik, and the pitching coach, uh, Sean Fesch. So let's say hello to these guys. How you guys doing? Very well, nice to be here. Glad to uh, have you guys down. I've been down to the, to the field a couple times to uh, talk with you guys, but nice for you guys to take a little time, come right into the studio here on the eve of the, uh, of the season starting. So I know it's a very busy time for you guys, but it's great that you guys could come down and we can catch up and see what's going on with the Westerners this year. Absolutely. Um, so obviously the rain could mess things up, but uh, last night you were able to get a game in. Uh, you had your uh, exhibition game against the Housatonic Valley All-Stars, I guess it was? Yep. And uh, so what did you guys think? Um, you know, it's really your first look at the team. It's kind of interesting the way this NECBL thing works. You guys come in, there's a lot of uh, turnover on the roster. You don't really see the players that much, only for a couple days before the actual season starts. But you get a glimpse at them last night. What's your uh, first impression of the guys you got coming in this year? You know, I, I got in myself yes, you know, early yesterday morning, um, and so the first really real shot that I had to see those guys was yesterday in the game. Um, there's some good things there. You know, we're waiting on uh, probably waiting on about seven or eight more guys, um, but uh, from what we saw yesterday, and Sean can elaborate on the pitching. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. Uh, we have a couple missing pieces still, um, but uh, you know, we had a good showing last night. Very good, yeah, and uh, you guys ended up scoring a decent amount of runs last night. Um, they had a good pitcher going early in the game, but uh, you guys ended up breaking things out. Yeah, he was good. He was good. You know, at one point, Sean and I were talking, we wanted to 
just kind of switch teams there for a little bit for the first three innings. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, it's going to take a while for our, guy, our guys to get used to playing with each other and kind of get to know each other. It's going to take us some, you know, some time to uh, to get to know them and make sure they're in the right positions. But um, you know, once we got past that first pitcher yesterday, uh, we kind of we kind of turned it up a little bit, and there was there's a lot of good signs that came out of the you know the rest of that game. And I noticed, Sean, you decided. I guess you would be the one who decided as the pitching coach. Um, you had your pitchers only go one inning last night. Uh, is that a good way to not to overwork them right out of the gate, but also just for you to get to start looking at the guys? Yeah, because you know the guys like like uh, Chef said. You know we have limited time to work with them, so we want to get as much. Um, preseason time as possible and, and let the kids feel comfortable coming in um, and also the big thing for us is deciding where do they fit in as a starter a reliever closer um, so the biggest thing I liked last night was um, everybody competed and, that, and that's really that's my philosophy and that's Chef's philosophy is just you know we don't care what talent level you have just go out and compete for us. Yeah, looking at some of the pitchers, you know, it's hard to tell sometimes as they're coming out of college to you guys if they're actually going to be starters or relievers. When I'm, like, looking at the signings you've had, uh, so I guess you have to deal with that as well, try to figure out what best, you know, that will suit uh, you, your guys' needs and how you can use them. Yeah, and, and another difficult thing we, we uh, deal with is the information we get on some of our, our players isn't always the most accurate. Um, you know, I, I, the coaches have to sell their players to come to Danbury. And, you know, sometimes we uh, are pleasantly surprised, but sometimes disappointed as well. Now, you guys have established yourself. You guys are back as a team, managing team, six or is this seven years now? Six years. Six years. And you're a hitting coach. Jamie is uh, head coach of Keystone College. Um, and I believe the hitting coach from there has been with you guys now in the Westerners? Uh, Ryan has been here. This is his third year with us right now. So you have a nice solid base, which I would think helps because you know what you're going to get from Sean. Yep. Sean knows what he's getting from you, and now you got the hitting coach in place. So you guys probably have a pretty good system. Now that's got to help you guys getting yeah, into the season. It helps tremendously. I mean, it, you know, Sean knows what I'm thinking. I know what he's thinking. Um, you know, we've been together now for so long that, um, you know, like I said, everybody knows what each other should expect and, and what we're trying to do. So, um, you know, it's if Sean's, if I have to, you know, jump in there and help Sean, he does the same thing with me. We've got a very good rapport. Um, I enjoy, you know, coaching with these guys, and uh, I think that just translates into the players throughout the course of the summer as well. And as far as recruiting goes, like, I'm not sure exactly what the process is, how you guys do that. We had, um, we did a Denver Westerners uh, roundup show a few weeks back. Paul Schaefer was in, um, and I think it was him who was talking about um, how it used to be you guys really had to go look for players. You had to you know find them. Now you're getting a little bit, maybe because you guys have been here so long, you're having success winning the Western Division twice in the last three years, that some of these colleges are now actually looking to get their kids to come play for you guys in this league. So, you know, how do you think that, you know, what you guys are doing, the success, the fact that you guys are here with a system long term, is that helping you guys get some players? Yeah, definitely. You know, we, we, we've gained some pretty good relationships with college coaches, some certain college coaches throughout the country. And, you know, when we first started here six years ago, you know, the team was pretty much the, the local Danbury All-Star team. That's, that's kind of what it was. We didn't have a lot of host families. Um, I give a lot of credit to you know Paul Schaefer and, and Terry Whalen and the guys that have been here and, and Mike Malone. The, this pro, this this team has jumped. I mean leaps and bounds from six years ago. Uh, you know we can house 30 kids right now. Our entire roster. The organization is growing, um, but the recruiting process is uh, it was difficult. It's hard. You know, I think a lot of the kids that have come through this program in the past have had such good. Um, experiences that they're going back to their college programs and you know recommending other kids to come here and so are the coaches. Yeah and I remember the first time I went out a few years ago down to the field on opening day and talked to you guys um, I don't believe that year maybe there was one or two kids who was coming back and that was kind of a rarity you guys were talking about how it was hard for you to get kids to come yeah. back now it seems like each year last year this year you got some kids coming back as well maybe that's becoming a little yeah. bit easier. Yeah you guys. it is yeah guys like to play here you know, and I think um, you know, those guys, th these players go through a grind for nine months at the school that they're at. Um, you know, the last thing that they need is to go away for the summer for two more months and just have a miserable experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for the most part, the majority of guys that come through this program have a good time. They enjoy playing for us. 
Um, they, they like the area, they love the league, and it's a, it's a good opportunity for them as well. And Sean, speaking of the grind, this is something that you got to deal with right away. Some of these kids come throwing a ton of innings already, and you probably were counting on this kid, uh, Chris Murphy, who had a perfect game. Uh, he's a Division II pitcher. You guys had signed him, but all of a sudden he's shut down uh, by his school because he reached his inning limit, and now he's not going to be on the team. So how do you deal with that? Do you get you know, their coaches come to you and say, look, my guy's throwing so many innings already. We're hoping maybe he doesn't get blown up this, whole, this summer. How do you handle that situation? Well, you know what, we, you know, Chev does most of the recruiting, but, you know, we have a lot of conversations about it. And we expect going into the year that the roster we put together in November, it, it will be torn apart a little bit. But unfortunately, in the last, what would you say, about a month? The last month, We yeah. lost five starting pitchers. Yeah, so, that's a uh, tough deal. You know, you go back to the drawing board, and, and really at that point, there's not a ton available starting pitching, or at least quality pitching for this league. Mm -hmm. So we just decided that um, to call around and find the best possible arms. Um, so guys are going to get thrown in roles that maybe they're not accustomed to doing, but um, it, you know, sometimes they they find um, you know working out of their comfort zone that, that it actually can be a role that uh, that they embrace. Um, I saw one of the most recent signings. A uh, name that people might uh, actually recognize. I'm not sure what his talent level is. 26 strikeouts and 22 innings for his uh, team, Grand Canyon University. But Brandon Bonilla, yeah. uh, Bobby Bonilla's son. So at least bring some ra name recognition to the team, which is always good. A little publicity that way. Yeah, um, Bobby Bonilla's Bobby Bonilla's son, Barry Bonds' uh, godson. That's right. Yeah, I mean he's 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 a very talented pitcher. He's you know we watched him pitch last night and. He's a little raw. Um, we're hoping that um, you know throughout the course of the summer. I know he wants to be a starter. He pitched primarily at the bullpen at Grand Canyon, but he wants to be a starter, and um, you know hopefully he de he develops into that over the course of the next you know eight weeks. There's you know, not a better person to, to get him there than than Sean for sure. And it's good. I mean, a kid like that, you know, it's interesting watching uh, as a sports fan now. I'm, I realize I'm getting older because you're seeing a lot of sons uh, playing in sports now coming up. Uh, the Final Four had a bunch of kids that uh, were sons of players that I watched growing up myself. So anyways, we're seeing that happen now, which is a sign that we're all getting older. But anyways, um, and I see, I mean, you guys continue to make inroads in big programs. One of the more recent signings was a kid from Michigan, but I see you guys got a bunch of kids from the ACC, pitcher uh, from Boston College. Maryland, a couple guys from Georgia Tech. Yeah. It's something you guys have been doing in recent years. So, I mean, to have kids come from big programs, you know, they've probably seen quite a bit and they're uh, probably highly competitive kids. So, I mean, that's gonna help as well. Yeah, Georgia Tech, um, Maryland, um, Tulane, they've always been the, you know, the, the programs where we've had pretty good relationships with. And now the coaching staff that was at Maryland for the past couple of years, they moved on to Michigan. So, you know, you should, oh, okay. you know, you probably see a lot of Michigan kids coming in and out of Danbury over the next couple of years. Nice. And uh, you got some local kids as well, which is nice. Um, kid from Monroe, John Testani. John is also uh, assistant coach at Bethel High School. You would know this. I'm, I'm pretty sure John was part of the team that won uh, for Massac a couple years ago. Yeah, SWCs. yeah, they had a, I mean, they had a powerhouse team for yeah. for a high school team, and you know, it, it's amazing to go right from transition from high school to to what we're doing now. But even at the high school level, when when he was there, you you could see that you know there's there was a future for him, and and um, you know it's it's funny as I'm watching coaching against these kids, I also envision that, hmm, you mm -hmm. know, maybe down the road we're, we're going to have to keep our eye on, on certain guys. And that was great for UConn. They were a surprise team. Uh, not a great season record-wise, uh, but they did make a big run in their Big East Conference uh, championship to win that championship and then played very competitively in the uh, regional uh, rounds of the NCAA. So great job and a great experience for John and uh, UConn. So he's going to be bringing that experience to you guys. Um, so tomorrow morning uh, we get the big uh, breakfast, celebrity breakfast. You guys looking forward to this? Ron Darling is the speaker this year. So uh, you guys, are, that's always going to be a big thrill for you guys to see who they bring in to speak and uh, have that big uh, morning for you guys. Yeah, I mean it's a great way to kick off the season and obviously um, you know uh, Paul and, and, and Danny Rocco and everything like that, they've, they've really kind of uh, made it a point to 
to add, um, you know, local guys, you know, Mets, Yankees, uh, Red Sox, and, that, mm -hmm. and that's huge. And, and I mean, yeah. there's definitely, um, you know, I've talked to so many people that, that are excited to hear, you know, Ron speak, and as am I. I mean, he's, yeah. um, you know, I'm a huge Mets fan, so I listen to him and, you know, Gary Cohn and, and Keith Hernandez quite a bit. So it'll be nice to hear him speak in person. Are you going to ask him what's going on with the Mets? They're putting you on this incredible roller coaster ride. You know, I mean, they're terrible to start the year. Well, actually, right out of the gate, they looked like they were going to be, you know, not too bad. At least compete for a little while, at least, and see what happens. Then they start playing terrible. Then you get the unbelievable four-game sweep of the Yankees, and they go to Miami, and what happens? You know, <laughs> I, I, I hate to say it because it's my team, but it's... You, you, you kind of do get used to that. It's it's just um, you know expect the unexpected with them. That's a rough go. I mean, because you know, Met fans. I deal with Bob over here, a big <laughs> Met fan, and I know he was thrilled uh, about the sweep of the Yankees. And then you know, you think you know at least you catch a break on the schedule. Miami's terrible. Maybe you guys put together a little run, get back on your feet a little bit. But it really just has not worked out that way. They got a nice win last night against Washington. We'll see what's going on weather-wise down there. Maybe they can get two out of three against uh, the Nats, who are struggling as well. What do you think of uh, Matt Harvey, though? I mean, he, you know, I, I watch baseball all the time. And now, you know, I have two boys, Cooper and Logan. And, and they're starting to get into baseball. Mm -hmm. and, and not only playing it, but, but watching it on TV. And, you know, I, I, tell, I tell them, because I know they want to emulate some certain people so I always tell Cooper because he loves the pitch that you know this is a guy that you you want to watch because he just he goes about his business um, you know there's no BS it's just come right at you be aggressive and and just you know have fun out there you can you can see that when he's on that mound it, it, there's not a better place to be right how uh, your kids getting are they aged yet to be t-ball or park and rec baseball yet yeah they're actually in, both involved in um, the rookies program which is a pitching machine uh, program so um, it was great to have them both on the same team this okay. year and, okay. and uh, you know they they had a good time and uh, they uh, they beat up on a couple teams too Jamie you may not know this Sean and I go way back uh, park and rec days Sean was so talented as a kid he's a couple years younger than me but he was brought up a couple leagues into my league. My dad was the coach, actually, and his dad was uh, the assistant coach. So Sean came up uh, right away, I guess, into minors. He skipped right over T-ball or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but uh, I do remember it was great having you on the team. It was a little unnerving at times when you came up throwing heat, lefty, you know, at, in batting practice, and we had to step in the box. I was like, man. I'm glad he's on our team because this is a little bit, uh, Sean was a little wild in his early days as a pitcher. I'd say that's putting it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, uh, it was uh, definitely a little bit of a, whoa, what am I getting into when you stepped into the box? But obviously, Sean, you had great talent right from the beginning. Everybody saw that. And, you know, Sean had great success in Bethel baseball, drafted, um, and, uh, you know, I was going to ask, have you been in touch with the most recent Bethel High uh, draftee, Matt Burns? Have you talked to him in uh, recent times at all? Yeah, we, we text back and forth, you know, and it's, it's, it's great to see, uh, you know, a local kid getting an opportunity at, you know, at the professional level, and, and really he's off to a great start. Um, you know, and I just kind of talked to him a little bit more about, um, you, you know, the mental grind of it. I mean, his, his talent level is, is just, it's off the charts. I mean, he's... You know, he's a, a 20 game winner waiting to happen. Now it's just a matter of putting, you know, handling the, the off the field with the on the field. Yeah, and he did have a great start last year. I haven't really checked his numbers yet. I should have checked that out since I am a Red Sox fan. I need to know how he's doing, but my Red Sox are playing pretty well. So there isn't a pending need for him right now uh, for them to rush him along. So, uh, but no, it's great to see him off to a good start and uh, looking uh, pretty good. Um, the grind and all that stuff, Jamie, I've heard you talk about it um, before, you know, obviously you need talent on the team, but, you know, to win, which you guys have done two out of the last three years, you need guys to want to be here, want to grind it out for the whole two months and, uh, you know, have each other's back. You know, how do you try to push those guys to get onto that page? 
Well, you know, at this point, you know, talent level, these guys, these guys, they didn't get to, to where they are, you know, right now by being bad baseball players. They can play. Um, I think our biggest challenge that the coaches face throughout the summer, and this is something that I've learned too over the past six years, is just trying to keep these guys engaged, keep them, making them, helping them that, that they want to be here, um, and keeping them engaged for the, you know, the next two months. Um, that's the one thing that I've learned. It's you know, at the end of the year, the end of the summer, it's not the, the most talented team that, that gets to the championship every year or even wins it every year. It's the team that you know that wants to stick around and wants to win and wants to continue to play, and they're not in a hurry to get home right away. Right. Uh, that's the team that you know, you, the team that stays healthy. That's the team that you know goes deep into the playoffs. And you guys last year kind of caught that magic from a couple years ago when you had the nice run the uh, first time around. Um, you know, last year it seemed like early on in the year you guys were kind of 500 team. It seemed like to me that it was like you'd have a good pitching outing, but the guys wouldn't hit on that day. Or yeah. the days that you were hitting, the pitching let down. But by midseason, it all seemed to come together. You guys really had a tremendous finish to the season in the regular season, and then obviously the great run into the championship round. We were in last place at one point last year. We were in last place going into July, um, you know, with four weeks to go. And we went on a run of winning, I believe, 14 out of our last, you know, 19 games. Right. Um, and we, we shot right up into, into second place and we were kind of bouncing back and forth. We, we didn't have a chance to get the number one spot, but we were, uh, we were teetering right around, you know, two or three. But there was one point where we were, you know, we were dead, dead in the water. Right. Um, and then we just kind of kicked it into gear and started playing some pretty good baseball. Yeah, so it was great. Um, you know, you guys get pretty good fan support down there at Rogers Park. Uh, and the fans, you know, always like a winner. So uh, things, when you start winning, especially, likes a winner. yeah, um, you know, it gets pretty good down there. So hopefully we'll have that um, going on this year as we, you know, see what happens. I mean, uh, two years ago, after you guys came, you know, basically a few outs away from winning the whole thing, um, I talked to you uh, before the season after that, and you kind of had the unfinished business yeah. uh, mantra. What are you thinking after uh, last year? You didn't, you know, have as competitive a final round uh, as you had a few years ago, um, but you know, still you were in that final round. Um, so what are you thinking as far you know, as that? A couple years ago, you know, that's always fresh in my mind. In my mind, when when Sean cost us that, you know, NACBL championship back then. <laughs> yeah, he, he and my dad <laughs> remind me all the time. Yeah, I remind him. Oh, I'm sure you just caught every year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, caught every morning with coffee. But he, uh, he, Sean cost us that that championship. You know, <laughs> but I was able to rebound again last year after right. after I forgot you about it. You put it back it, together. And, yeah, we, yeah, in I put spite it, of I him. I put it back together. <laughs> but now we came up short last year again, and. Uh, you know that, like I keep hearing all over the paper and everywhere else, that elusive title. Um, they might as well hang a sign at Rogers Park just to keep reminding us every day about it. But you know, it, we're going to get there eventually. Right. Um, whether it's going to be this year or, um, you know, it's. I told my wife a couple of years ago that I want to do this for a year or two, and that was it. Now I'm here. You know, <laughs> six years later, I'm still you doing it. And part of that is, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to, to get to that final game and, and not win a championship. So there is a lot of unfinished business. I just hope that unfinished business, you know, doesn't doesn't take me the next ten years. Well, the Danbury Whalers came through for us this year, uh, so that was great. Yeah, that was uh, a nice win, nice very nice. Uh, so you know, put a little extra pressure maybe on you guys. You know, <laughs> Danbury has a a big time winner, uh, <laughs> but no, uh, you know, we'll see. But what do you what do you guys think? Also, um, the league expanded. So I mean. I would think that's good for the league as well and good for you guys overall just as far as the league's getting bigger which I would think means the league is stronger uh, which means you know might help with more you know players getting more players in here what do you guys think of the expansion going on yeah I think like anything if you can keep things fresh and, and like you said add new teams and, and give the league great. a little bit more uh, credibility um, I think it's great you know um, well obviously we're always competing with the Cape but the Cape yep. will always be the Cape. But right. we've really, um, I think, really closed the gap as far as uh, talent level goes. And, and really, to me, maybe the Cape on their 28-man roster have 20 draftable guys. But we're, we're getting to a point where we have probably 15 draftable guys. Yeah, yeah you guys are getting tons of guys drafted, um, you know, and moving up as well. And guys coming out of the league and playing in the bigs. So, you know, that's great. Uh, you know, great stuff for the league okay. and all that. So, you know, we only have a few minutes left. Um, what are uh, you guys, uh, besides baseball, are you into the other sports? Are you following any of the other playoffs going on? 
NBA, NHL? You know, I got into the NBA a little bit because of the Knicks, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and my boys are getting into basketball a little bit too, so that's always kind of a good uh, father-son thing to do. And Any predictions? The NBA Finals get underway tonight with the Miami Heat surviving against the Indiana Pacers, who uh, didn't quite seem to be able to handle Game 7. What a letdown that was. Yeah, I didn't expect to see that. No, I didn't. I mean, you had to figure Miami probably would win that game, but the way the, ser the series was so tight that you thought it would be a good game. Indiana's defense usually keeps them right in games, but they, uh, you know, they took a hit in the second quarter, and they pretty much went away early, which was very disappointing. And they got the San Antonio Spurs sitting there well rested and ready to go. So I think it's going to be a pretty good series. I'm kind of leaning towards San Antonio. I'm not a big fan of Miami, so that might be part of the reason why I'm leading towards San Antonio. What do you guys think about this uh, basketball? You, you don't want to ask me about basketball. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have never been a basketball fan. I, hockey, I've seen my first hockey game live uh, back in, I think, February when I came up here to see the Whalers play. Mm -hmm. uh, you want know, to talk football and baseball, we'll talk all day long, but basketball and, and hockey, I'm right. uh, so never been that interested. So you were until uh, past midnight like I was watching the Bruins double overtime game last <laughs> Absolutely night? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting for it to end. Thankfully, it ended in uh, my favor with the Bruins winning, taking the 3-0 lead on the mighty Pittsburgh Penguins, finally maybe getting some redemption for the early 90s uh, two back-to-back -back seasons they lost to the Penguins when the Penguins were winning back-to-back -back cups and Ulf Samuelson was breaking Cam Neely's leg and ending really a great career so yeah no uh, no love lost between the Bruins and the Penguins uh, so we will be very happy if the Bruins can finish uh, that deal off um, but let's talk actually uh, real quick um, Keystone how you guys had another good uh, season I saw 17-1. Um, and one. Were you in division? 17-1 we in the conference, the conference and we ended up finishing 38-10 uh, and 10 overall. Mm -hmm. We came uh, one game away from going back to uh, the World Series. So great season again for you guys. You got a nice uh, thing going on down there. You guys are very competitive. Every Absolutely. Year, it seems like. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. 17-1, um, do you guys have a conference uh, championship after the regular season? Huh? Yeah, we, uh, we won our conference championship for the ninth, ninth straight year. Nine straight, yep. Sean. Yeah, but do you notice he can't win the big game? He tries to blame it on me. <laughs> You're right. But, you know, I think we're, we're sensing a pattern. I've been labeled. I've been labeled as the guy that can't win the big game. Ah, one. come on. <laughs> Successful program. All right, well, we're going to wrap things up. You guys really appreciate you coming into studio. Great to see you back in the area coaching the Westerners again. We'll be out rooting on the team. Weather doesn't look great this weekend, but we'll you know. We'll be at the breakfast tomorrow. And yeah, we'll be down at the breakfast tomorrow too. That's going to be a great time. Uh, hopefully opening night tomorrow night and Saturday night, firefighters night. Yes. Uh, I think that benefits Sandy Hook as well. So uh, we'll look for all the fans down there at Rogers Park. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time.